During the last three decades, agricultural markets have been more integrated. International trade has helped to reduce the cost of food for consumers around the world and help the producers to get a better price for their efforts. It has also contributed to reduce price volatility by creating deeper markets and large markets, since a large and global market is more resilient to both price manipulation or speculation by economic agents, but also exogenous shock like climatic events. Therefore, trade plays a critical role in mitigating risk and by diversifying the, the source of supply. And it's only from time to time when climatic events are synchronized all around the world that problem occurs, like we get last year, when at the same time you get fire in Russia, flood in Pakistan, and drought in Australia. However, agricultural markets remain highly distorted and trade barriers forbid to grasp all the potential gain of trade liberalization. In addition, for policymakers, a new kind of risk enters the equation, the instability of the trade policy of your partners. First, agricultural tariffs are in average five times above tariffs in industry. This leads to negative effect in terms of trade, meaning that agricultural prices are maintained in average artificially lower than manufacturing prices and it has a cost for the main producer of agricultural goods. In addition, it will deter investments and have long-term effect on world agricultural productivity. But beyond this structural and average level of prices, agricultural trade policies have large effects on price volatility. Indeed, for many countries, they have been designed in a way to insulate the domestic price from fluctuation on world prices, meaning that when agricultural prices go up in world markets, countries reduce their import tariffs in order to limit the price increase at home that boost world demand and add another pressure on world prices. And similarly, they try to set export restriction export ban or export taxes that will reduce price at home but reduce the supply at world market. Similarly, when prices are low on world market, countries increase their tariffs and remove their export taxes and even can implement export subsidy. So we have a set of policies all around the world that are trying to protect stability on domestic market, increase volatility on world market, with a high cost for low countries or net food importer countries that do not have the capacity to implement such policies. In the short run, it's very important that the door around is going to be completed. Indeed, it will help to reduce the level of agricultural protection and will continue to promote trade. It will give a safer trading system by reducing also the level of bond tariff and the uncertainty about future level of protection as well as a simplification of tariff structure. Last but not least, it will be a very strong signal about the fact that global governance can help to deal with potential negative externalities of trade policies. A more challenging issue is the treatment of export taxes and export restriction. Indeed, currently, the WTO rules does not forbid country to implement export taxes. These measures are not even part of the current negotiation or even of the current commitment of country. In this context, it will be important first to lead to a better system of notification of export taxes, but also maybe buying this measure at the WTO. Next step will be to clearly acknowledge the cost of externalities of this measure, meaning that when a large country implements export taxes, in some case in response to more panic than a rational decision, it has a cost for other countries and especially least developed countries that are net food importer. So we need to channel resources to this country to be able to pay the price of their food bill during this period where large exporters implement export taxes. And it makes sense that countries that import export taxes try to contribute to this kind of fund in order that the protection of their own consumer does not lead to an overcost for other consumers. 
Finally, we have to keep in mind that in order to promote agricultural liberalization in the future years, we need to address both import restriction and export restriction. If we ask only to countries to open their markets by limiting their import duties, and at the same time we cannot give guarantee that world markets will be here when they need them in terms of prices, and that food suppliers are not going to stop to export during this period, this importing country will say that it's not safe for them to run on world markets.